The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 12th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in, if you would, at 877-927-6648. And if you can't dial in, hey, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it to Steve at tfnn.com. Send it early. And in that subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. And, of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. we got a bit of a mixed bag out there. You've got the Dow up 140 points. That's about a half a percent. S&P slightly positive, about five. The same thing for the NASDAQ. It's up 15. Russell's off 16. Semis are down 10. Trannies are up 115. Gold's off 10. Silver's down 56 cents. Lights Recruit is off about two bucks. Natural gas is up three cents. 30 Treasury is off nine ticks. He's trading at 124.12. If we take a look at the leaders to the upside, dollar-wise, you've got Moderna up 12 bucks or 10 percent into it. 10 bucks, two and a half percent. Bionitech up nine bucks, six percent. United Health Group up nearly eight bucks or one and a half percent. PepsiCo is up uh, five percent. That's seven dollars and change. To the downside, Mercado Libre. Mercado Libre, M E L I, up 27 bucks. That's a little over 3 percent. Albemarle, off 5 percent or 14 bucks. SBA Communications Corp, off 10 bucks, 4 percent. Palomar Holdings off 10%, nearly $9. And Viva Inc. is off 9 bucks and change, and that's off 15%. So we've got some things to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's begin by taking a look at the uh, Dow Equity Future Contract. What I just noticed as we were coming on the air is there is a new profile that is uh, forming here inside of the uh, Dow, Dow Equity Future Contract it is. So the indice right now that is rallying is trading right up into resistance. I'll just simply expand out this chart here. This is a daily time frame, December contract. You'll see that new profile. So support out here. Now, I can't tell for sure if I am if I need to get confirmation on this one tonight. I, I'll, I'll say I do at this stage here. Um, but it seems pretty solid at this stage of the game. So support, 29010. At least this is the uh, game plan for today. Resistance, it's a bear structured profile. So it's bearish in structure because at the top is where sellers are at. At the bottom is where buyers are at. It's in the center, and that doesn't mean that it's in the center. It just means in between the uh, top and the bottom of the profile. That center is where buyers and sellers believe there's fair value inside that range, the range, again, being the top to the bottom. Well, it turns out, so there's buyers and sellers both there. This is Stevie's viewpoint. And uh, they're at 29,574. Well, since you've got some sellers located there and buyers that's closer to the top of that profile, then for me, that gives it a bearish structured tone. And so sellers exist between 29,574 and 29,761. So if there's going to be a rally, looks like it's going to be pretty minimal. Now, if price takes out the top of that daily profile, that changes things. Changes things doesn't mean it changes things and we're now entering a new bull market. No, that's not what Stevie is saying. It just changes things with regard to where price might uh, take off. To, but we don't have to deal with that right now. Right now, what we do need to know is where the resistance levels are. And that's courtesy of those TAS market profiles. We do not have new market profiles forming on the ES, which price is trading below the bottom of. 
That's really a bearish signal. The NQ also trading below the bottom of its profile. That's a bearish signal, even more bearish than the ES Mini, because price took out the low of October 3rd yesterday. That was the buy the D point pattern. So that's been negated. It's got no bottom signal. The ES does have a bottom signal. The Dow does have a bottom signal. The Russell also. So inside the NQ, it's going to have to get its mojo back before there's going to be any kind of concerted rally uh, to the upside out there. Again, I'm not calling for anything other than just a relief rally. And if we go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, let me just see where that advanced decline oscillator is trading as we speak right now. It is it's still above the extreme ish oversold level it's at minus 126 that's certainly oversold you start getting down below minus 150 and that's when you get to that extreme oversold area out there so that's not necessarily helping us take a look at the spot volatility out here we can see that it's trading out at 33.58 out there now you can see all the forward future contracts here prices trading uh, the, the current spot fix is above that uh, level out there uh, is that going to change anything now, nothing's going to change out here at this stage of the game. So there's no real signal that's coming from the spot politics that's going to assist, other than, um, you know, rug pulls will see uh, quick uh, moves to the downside. So let's move from here, and let's go over and take a look at the uh, – let's stick with the Dow here for the uh, moment. Let's go take a look at its multi-time frame uh, charts out here. So we'll change our windows. Momentarily, you'll see uh, about eight different panels pop up on your screen, the upper left being the daily time frame. No reason for us to really spend time on the daily because we already did that and took a look at that new potential profile that's forming out here. I don't have a bottom pattern per se on the five-hour time frame chart. What price is doing right now, it's trading right in the center of that profile. It's consolidating with inside that daily profile. I don't have a bottom signal on the uh, four-hour time frame chart. I don't even think there's an A to B equals CD to the downside that would be easily identifiable. Let me just expand out the screen and just confirm that. Yeah, so that's not in play as we speak. Um, but price is dealing with that at 240. So the bottom pattern on the 240 minute, I take that back, is all the way back here at about $2,200 on October the 2nd. And that was confirmed right here at 10 a.m. on October the 3rd with that uh, bullish engulfing candle. So we do have that bottom. And price really here, you can see the 240 chart kind of tells the picture. The consolidation with inside the Dow is between the 28,876 level and uh, 33.79 to 34.60. That's the consolidation area. Price will need to bust one side or the other to suggest that there's some kind of change in trend signal for the four-hour time frame chart out there. We go from the four-hour down to the 60-minute. 60-minute earlier today, 4 o'clock this morning, that formed a, a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern out there. Now, why did price stop where it did? Is there any, uh, any indication as to why it did? Not on the 60-minute time frame chart. Uh, that doesn't show up. On the 30-minute time frame chart, was there some level of resistance that price was hitting? The answer there, not that I see as we take a look at that. Um, so not much else to really report on for you uh, inside of the Dow Equity Future contract. So if that's the case, why don't we, while we've got a few seconds, let's see if we can get the NQ to populate here. The NQ right now, the NASDAQ 100 up 27 points. We'll want to keep an eye on that. Now, what my expectation and anticipation before we go to the break is we should see a bounce that lasts for at least two days. I would say two to five days, and it really should start today. The reason it should start today is because we just had five consecutive down days inside the NQ out there. Typically, after five consecutive down days, we see some kind of bounce. So that's where we're going to go look at when we come back to the uh, when we come back after this break. Look at the NQ chart, see what they're doing, and uh, of course, I would love to hear from you at eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back up, folks. So we got the Dow trading up 157 points. The S&P is up 8. The NASDAQ 100 is up 30. And we're going to turn right now to the 30-minute chart here for the NQ. And as we take a look at it, here's the story that is painting for us. That is yesterday at uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a 30-minute uh, time frame. What the NQ did was generate a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. That's, uh, that's confirmed by the diagonal black lines that are drawn and then the uh, bullish engulfing candle at the 4 o'clock, uh, that 30-minute session out there. That um, has led to just really a slight rally. Uh, the key level here for the NQ throughout the uh, day that would suggest that the uh, NQ would have some legs out here would be a close above 1102925. 1102925 is the TD nine count breakdown level. And uh, that was tested once yesterday. Uh, that was at uh, what, one o'clock in the afternoon. Price got up there and simply turned back down. Uh, got back to uh, lower lows out there. We don't have lower lows uh, this morning, not since uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, I do know that at the uh, 10 o'clock session out here, that 30-minute bar had uh, gigantic volume in it. Uh, so right now, the picture of the NQ still has that valid bottom, but the real key level out here is going to be 11.029. Now, the NQ on the 30-minute time frame has got three battles in front of it right now. The first battle is the oscillator and change line, which is red. And that's at about 10,895. If price can close over that, then it's going to move into a bearish structured profile. And that's in the 10,930, 10,953. So those are the two, three battlegrounds that the NQ has to deal with on a 30 minute time frame. And the final battleground would be up at 11,029.25. If price can take that out, then the next battleground above that is going to be at 11,153.75. So that's taking things step by step on a 30 minute time frame. If you look at the other time frame charts out here, just looking for any other signals, you know, the NQ for its 60-minute uh, time frame generating roads momentum indicator bottom signal, so too the 120-minute time frame chart. We've got a TD9 count bottom that's in place here for the 240. We don't have any kind of bottom pattern just yet for the uh, five-hour chart. That would need a bullish reversal candle to uh, confirm a... Um, uh, to confirm a roads momentum indicator bottom out there. In fact, the NQ daily also needs the same thing. 
uh, to confirm a uh, Rosman to indicator of bottom signal. Now, 11.050 is the current daily oscillator and change line. So that's a real key level of uh, resistance. Uh, you know, if the market does rally, you're certainly going to watch that area uh, towards the uh, afternoon time frame out there. So that's what's going on inside the NQ. We don't have any questions just yet. Uh, nothing inside the Tiger's Den as well. So let's uh, move on here. Let's go move on. Let's take, we'll take a look at what's going on with uh, Goldilocks. So let's get the uh, December contract up here for gold. This will take just a moment to populate. Gold trading down $9.10 right now. She's trading out at sixteen seventy six eighty. So let's get this. Now, gold has got a TD9 count bottom. It has a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. If you caught the... Uh, uh, the 11 a.m. market update. We do know that price is pulled back to the center of its bearish structure daily profile. This is the area that needs to hold the support. That's at 1668.80. Now we'll really need to see for gold to suggest that it's got some mojo and wants to make a run back for the 1740-ish area is a close above the top of that profile. And that profile level is at 1680.50. So that's a key area that gold needs to close above. On a five-hour time frame out here, as we open up this chart, that's the 300-minute chart out here, what we don't have is really any kind of a bottom signal. However, a bottom signal can form when price pulls back to where stocks broke out, or this instance, the five-hour time frame chart broke out. That's established by the TD Nike out break uh, breakout area, 1660.650. So price got back there, didn't really test it, but that area is held. But even though it's held, five-hour time frame chart for gold is nowhere near out of the woods. Why is that? Because price has been deflected by that oscillator and change line. And in fact, it had changed colors back here at about 2,300 hours. And that was, and as price was moving back to that breakout level of support. And when it changed colors, it told us that price and that line should test each other, which it did. And it did that at 2 a, uh, no, this is five hour chart, 2 o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. And then it was resistance. And that took price right back to support. So really what we have here, I just had the five hour chart, let's just make this simple. We have a bit of a consolidation going on with inside his profile, it's bullish in structure, 1671.50 is support and 1691.40 is the resistance level out there. If we take a look at the, uh, hour, the four hour time frame chart, it has a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom, 1687.80 is its key level resistance that it needs to overcome. The 120-minute chart, Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern out there. 1696.60 is a real key area of resistance. 1691.70 on the 60-minute time frame chart, also Rhodes Mintum. So you got a lot of different bottom patterns out here. What price has been unable to do is take out resistance. So you've just got a good old-fashioned somewhat of a consolidation. But if price can close above 1680.50, that will be a, a bullish outcome for Goldilocks. We do have our first request. This one coming from Joey D inside the Tiger's Den. And Joey wants to take a look at Facebook. Of course, ticker symbol there, M-E-T-A now, Meta. And uh, so we'll get this populated out there. I looked at uh, Facebook, uh, Joey, uh, earlier this morning. I just can't remember what uh, I, I, I just can't remember what it was. I, I think it has a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal. Yeah, it does. So now this just popped up out there. And so, Joey, what this needs, and I don't know, you say Meta, please. I don't know what you're looking for here. So I'm just giving you the rundown. What what uh, Meta does, needs, doesn't need, it needs a bullish reversal candle. If it does that, then it would generate a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom. And then what price would need to do, Joey, is close, uh, close above its red oscillator and change line. That's currently in the 130.106 area. you got to give that a little bit of room. If price can overcome that, then its next battleground would be at 135.67 and above that 140.31. No bottom pattern yet, a signal of a potential that could form. But the market needs to do what it needs to do, and that is to create some type of bullish reversal candle. If we look at a weekly time frame chart, Joey, what Meta is telling us is it's going to continue to head lower. It's below profiles. It doesn't have a bottom pattern. Yes, as a Rose Mentum indicator signal. That requires a bullish reversal candle. You're in bar number seven out there. So uh, this is suggesting, Meta that is, that it wants lower price. And the monthly chart says, yeah, this is not a good long-term hold. And the reason that it's saying that is because it negated, that is last month, the month of September, negated a TD nine count bottom pattern. And it did it really after just uh, one to two, basically did it after two months out there. And that tells us about a strong momentum move to the downside. Now, Joey, just like we took a look at, um, yeah, what were we taking a look at? That other symbol, oh, gold. What's gold? Uh, yeah, I think on, on one of the time frames, five hour time frame, pulling back to the breakout area. Well, on a monthly basis, there is some potential hope for Meta, and that's at the 115. 
151 level. We're trading at 127.85, and why is that? Because that's its breakout area, but it's hitting that breakout area in a monthly time frame without any kind of a bottom pattern out there. So on a monthly basis, the uh, best hope would be some type of bullish reversal candle that would confirm and buy the D point pattern out there. But short of that, Meta looks like it wants to continue to head lower, and I'm not even saying that 115.51 is where price is going to uh, form that bottom. So hope that's the information that you were looking for. Thank you so much for the uh, request out there. Always makes the show go so much quicker out here. And plus, I provide you with the information that you're looking for. So no other requests just yet. Let's go take a look at Microsoft. Is the market going to bottom without Microsoft bottoming? Probably not. Without Apple bottoming? Probably not. Without the SMHs bottoming? Probably not. So we get back from this break, unless we have some requests out there. We'll take a look at Microsoft which has no bottom signal. It does need a bullish reversal candle to confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom out there. Boy, telling us that the markets are really stretched. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Hope you're right. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. A bit of a mixed market out here. You got the Dow's up 142, S&P's up 9, NASDAQ 143, Russell's off 11, semis are down 7. We're taking a look at Microsoft here which you can see Microsoft trading lower, no bottom pattern that's in place out here. If you did get a bullish reversal candle, it would confirm a daily Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. That would suggest a rally up to the 231.43-ish area, and a price could clear that, I would say the mark would be 241.08 out there. 237.13 would be a battleground. On a weekly time frame, you can see that it is in bar number eight of a TD9 count. What we know about the TD9 counts is that you need to form that low on bars 8, 9, or the bar following that, and bar number 9, must complete. So that says on a weekly basis next week, what Microsoft, in order for that pattern to come to fruition, Microsoft will need to close below 
the close of bar number five, and that's at 237.92. So if it's this pad that's going to identify a bottom, we're not really looking at much of a uh, rally really taking place in the case of Microsoft. That would say not much of a rally inside of the markets out there. But it does have bar number eight. It does have bottoming potential. Now, if we take a look at Microsoft on a weekly basis, uh, coming off of the highs out there, the first TD9 count bottom that formed was on the bar following bar number nine. That was on March the 11th. What that did was that led to a test of resistance, resistance being both a bearish structured profile as well as its oscillator and change line. The next time a TD9 count bottom forms, it does it on the bar following bar number nine, also wave number seven. That's courtesy of the uh, Chapman wave out there. And that took place on June the 17th. What did that do? The same very thing that led to a test of resistance. In this case here, the resistance level being the top of its profile as well as the TD9 count breakdown area. So is the third time a charm? Well, if that's the case in, in the case of Microsoft, then we know that it would be bar the bar following bar number nine. Bar number eight is this week. Number nine would be next week. Then it would be the following week that Microsoft would get that bottom signal that would then take price up to resistance, which right now is its oscillator and change line or 253.31. But things may change between now and then. So that's what the weekly chart is communicating to you and I with regard to Microsoft. If we look at Microsoft on a monthly basis, you are in bar number nine out there as price is approaching its TD9 count breakout area at the 211.94 area. I used area a few times. My apology for that. Uh, so um, it's got potential. But right now it's saying, nope, no bottom. Now, if we look at a 30-minute time frame chart, let's do that. Let's pull that over here, see what we've got as far as signals are concerned. So you've got a, a couple attempts of a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. But during that last 30-minute session, the one that ended at 1130, you did get a bullish piercing candle. So price right now, in the case of Microsoft, what it should do is it sh should seek out where those sellers are located on a 30-minute basis. And that's up in the 226.59 area. If Microsoft can clear that, then we should see a rally back to its prior highs out there, maybe about 229, maybe 232. And a price, uh, 231, 232. If price can get above that, you're looking at 235.12. But right now, that battle is going to be a 226.59. That's courtesy of that 30-minute TAS market profile. we got a request to take a look at uh, TBT. That's for G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. So we'll punch up the uh, TBT chart. Now, that is the 2, 2X being short. The 30 year treasury out there. Now, what I don't know is what G Man is looking for, but uh, what we'll do is we'll go take a look at the TBT charts, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go take a look at the actual 30 year treasury, the underlying instrument. So we take a look at TBT, it has a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal, needs a bearish reversal candle to suggest a top, and it would need a close below its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 3286. The weekly time frame is in bar number nine. It also has a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, meaning it would need a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top. The monthly chart is also in bar number nine. So there's a lot of potential here for the TBT to at least form some type of top. Intermediate term, short term, could be longer term out there. So those are its signals. Now let's do this. Uh, and if there's any information that you need, G-Man, about the uh, TBT, hopefully you've got them on your screens. I know you do. You can write that down. If there's something specific that you need, just go ahead and ping me. But in the meantime, let's go take a look at the 30-year Treasury charts out there and get a feel for what they're communicating to you and I. And we look at the monthly time frame. The monthly time frame shows that it formed a TD9 count bottom last month. We did it on the bar following bar number nine. And if we get a close below that level, that level is 123.30 this month, it's telling you that you want to really stay with inside TBT. Now, when you get a valid bottom like this, what typically will unfold is price will make a run up to resistance, which in this case on a, on a monthly time frame for the 30-year Treasury is in the 142 area out there. You don't have to... That's just the potential for where price might go. You'd look at the weekly and the daily and resistance levels that have to fail in order for that to come to fruition. Turns out on a weekly basis, the 30-year Treasury is also in bar number nine of a TD9 count, also has a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, and thus would need a bullish reversal candle to confirm that Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. I also see wave number seven. That needs a higher low tomorrow to confirm that pattern. Resistance here. It was in the 128 area, that red oscillator unchanged line. And the daily time frame, it has a, did it negate that pattern? Give me a second here. The pattern I'm referring to would be a buy the D point pattern or TD9. Uh, so the TD9 count pattern was negated yesterday, uh, two days ago. <clears throat> but the buy the D point pattern remains in effect. 
and that's the close of September. That was a 20 uh, September 28th uh, candle session out there. The price on a daily basis still finding resistance to that red oscillator and change line still below profile levels out here. So this suggests staying with that TBT trade. Now I don't know where you're at. Uh, we did have somebody that wrote in yesterday. They were from a long-term standpoint inside the TBT, and it most certainly made sense for them to uh, stick with that trade out there. But you do have some monthly, weekly, and daily bottoming signals out there. Nothing that has been confirmed just yet other than the monthly TD9 count bottom. So continue to watch this, but I don't see any signal yet to suggest that uh, you would jettison your TBT position out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, TBT and your request, and thank you so much for that. Just checking the email, see if there's anything that has come in, and then the request, and the answer is no, there is not. So uh, let's take a look at... Uh, Let's take a look at so the market, the market, the market, the market. Let's go take a look at, we did this yesterday. Let's do it again today. Let's look at our three time frames out here. Let's look at the SMHs. And while I've got the, I'm going to change screens. So give me a moment to do that. We'll get back to the black background screens. And the reason that this is important or the reason that Stevie believes that this is important. Well, it really goes like this. Let me get back to a, actually a different chart out here. So I'll share this with you. Here's the semiconductors versus the uh, S&P 500. Now, this is a line chart that we're looking at, duh, uh, which means we're just taking a look. And now I have this line chart set to on market close. So we're just looking at closes out there. So those green vertical lines, what they do is they line up and they show a bottom that formed in both the S&P and the SMHs out there. The yellow lines show a bottom that formed, but the SMH eventually um, but the SMH did was was it uh, was it failed first out there, and when it failed, that simply stopped the uh, move higher inside of the uh, inside of the uh, inside of the spy. So if we take a look at the most recent bottom that formed out there, uh, that was back on the trading session of September 30th. The SMHs took that out. That's the top panel. That's the top panel of the screen that we're looking for out here. So not until we get a bottom in the SMHs out here, okay, the semiconductors, are we likely to get any kind of sustained rally inside the rest of the markets. In this case here, we really take a look at the S&P 500. So that's the first element to take a look at. The second element is, well, what are the SMHs doing? So that's a great question. And now what we know, we take a look at the SMHs. For those of you that love the A to B equals CDs, well, here you got a trifecta. And that trifecta says you have a confirmed a to B equals CD to the downside on the daily time frame. Price projection, the first one being 142. The weekly has a confirmed a to B equals CD, first price projection in the 128 area. The monthly has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. Its price projection level also in the 128 area. That doesn't mean we're not going to see short-term bottoms, but longer term, the market has not put in the significant bottom. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Still a mixed bag out here. Dow's up 152. S&P's up 11. NASDAQ 147 points. Russell's off 10. Semis are down 8. And let's go to a request that uh, came in. This is from uh, Tim M. And uh, Tim wants to take a look at Eli Lilly. Ticker symbol out there is LLY. Uh, question is, uh, looking for a long position entry. Thank you so much. Well, Tim, if we take a look at Eli Lilly on a daily time frame, Here's what we know. We know um, that right now, price is just consolidating with inside its daily profile. That's between a range of 320, 355, and 337. What do we have? It really looks like a good old fashioned consolidation here. And uh, price is up at the top of that uh, consolidation, so to speak. Let's look at the weekly time frame. The only signal that Stevie has out here, I'm going to expand out the chart, is uh, wave number seven. And that was confirmed. So it does have a confirmed top. Um, the weekly chart would say that the buy point might be at $300, and $300 even with 12 pennies out there. The other levels would be 279.30 and 286.24. It's a possibility that price could pull back there because it is below its oscillator and change zone. It does have wave number seven out there. It would be more helpful to generate a bearish reversal candle to confirm the Rosman indicator top as well. The monthly chart shows that we're in bar number eight out there, but it's bar number seven last month that made the high and price above its oscillator and changes. It's just consolidating or finding resistance, what I really should say out there, Tim, and that resistance level at the top of his profile, 335.33. So you're looking for an entry price. This is up near, um, let's just expand out this monthly chart out here. It's at its all-time highs, you know, near its all-time highs out there, at least going back to 2008 timeframe. Um, so what you need to see is let's look at a 30 minute time frame chart out here because I'm not getting a great feel on the daily, the weekly or the monthly where to tell you to possibly enter this. And so voila, here you go. What you really need to do, Tim, um, is I would come down and take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart and I would wait for some type of bottom pattern as an example, really two examples out here. The first one is the uh, TD nine count bottom that went ahead and formed it. 1.30 in the afternoon on October the 3rd. And that took price right up to resistance, its TD nine count breakdown area, when it formed, went ahead and formed a TD nine count pattern, lasted for a while, and then just simply resumed higher and took off from there. And then it formed another TD nine count top. It does it on bar following bar number nine, and that was at 10 o'clock in the morning on October 6th. That topping signal went ahead and took price lower. It did create a TD nine count bottom out there. That lasted, price ran right up into resistance. This was a bullish structured profile that had formed above price, that became the uh, counter trend rally resistance level, very much the opposite of what we looked at inside of gold and silver on a daily time frame chart. But here you get to see why Stevie says the things that he does. It's not just because I pull them out of my arse or anything, it's because of watching these patterns repeat time and time and time and time and time again. 
Now what's took well, now what took place out here is you got a nice Rosemont indi indicator bottom at 11 o'clock on the 11th. That was yesterday. What did that do? Took price right up to its TD nine count breakdown area, 331.52. Now there's no pattern up here to say that that's a top, but oftentimes getting the resistance where price broke down is a top, and now you've got price moving lower. So what you want to do is wait for the next pattern on a 30 minute time frame to form, you know, to consider taking a long position out there. I would prefer that you wait to get a much deeper pullback on a daily time frame or something, but it's just not in the cards just yet out there. So just use stops. Maybe it's more of a short-term trade, Tim. So I do hope that that uh, review helps you out, and thanks so much for taking the time to write in. We've got a request as well inside the Tiger's Den to take a look at ticker symbol GNK, and this is for pork belly, which uh, sounds to me like uh, bacon. Sounds like good, juicy bacon out there. So uh, maybe I should have a Baconator for lunch. What are you having for lunch today? I don't know. I'm thinking maybe a good uh, hamburger with some avocado and some bacon on it. But if we take a look at GNK, and I don't know what GNK is, I don't need to know what GNK is to uh, uh, tell you what it's doing out here. And right now what it's doing, it's got a nice little TD9 count and Rosemontum indicator bottom. And uh, it's taking price right up to resistance. Resistance on a daily basis was 1416 it got up to that area. It did that on the trading day of October the 7th. It got up to a high of 1412. Remember, 1416 was resistance. It backed off and it pulled back to find support at the bottom of a new daily profile. And it's bullish in structure. Price should now go target 1390. But that means it will target 1390. It will likely target that 1416 level again. GNK, if you are looking to, if you're in this position, what you're looking for is a close above 1416 to suggest that you have some type of change in trend. The weekly time frame chart, I don't have any kind of a bottom signal out here. It doesn't mean that it hasn't bottom or the price won't gravitate up towards the top of its profile in the 1485 level. I just don't have a weekly bottom pattern, nor do I on the monthly. The monthly has wave number seven, that's letter G. Price is below its profile, so longer term, what GNK, Genco Shipping and Trading, is going to likely do is go target that 580 level out there. But right now, you got that nice daily bottom. You know where resistance is at at 1416. I hope that helps you out. Pork Belly, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Hector wants to take a look at the IWM, the Russell 2000. Hector says, happy, wonderful Wednesday. Back at you, my friend. IWM, by the D point, again, on lighter volume is uh, very bullish, correct? So uh, there's a couple of different patterns out here. So you've got a nice TD nine count bottom pattern that formed. You were talking about a buy the D point pattern. And so you most certainly have that as well. I'm just going to expand out the daily time frame chart. Uh, the actual A to B, let me just get, that was a small one at uh, one time that we were looking at. So let's get rid of that. Here's your A to B, and I'm just simply going to move this. There's the B point. Now I'm just going to move this line over to the C level out there. And so, yeah, you've got a buy the D point pattern. That buy the D point pattern formed on September the 28th, but you also had that TD nine count bottom and that uh, completed on September 27th, one day early. What did that do with regard to the IWM? Well, what it did was it took price right up into resistance. Remember, this is a new profile, bullish in structure, forms above price that says counter trend moves would typically find resistance at the center of that profile that is exactly what happened 175 75 on a daily time frame for the iwm hector and patty that is a real key level of resistance that if it can overcome would be telling us something but it hasn't so far so is it bullish yeah but i don't want you to misinterpret the word bullish out there now what's not showing uh nope that's i take that back um uh, that's, that is incorrect. What price is doing right now, in order for it to get any kind of mojo back in the IWM, it needs to close above that red oscillator and change line, Hector. And that's at 167.78 as we speak. So that's a daily time frame. So you're by the D point pattern? Absolutely. But just also understand, you know, the patterns that formed earlier, the TD9 count, as well as that by the D point, and where price ran into resistance. And that's why Stevie says, yeah, bullish, absolutely, from a by the D point or TD9 count bottom. But running into resistance at where the counter trend rally should have ended, and that's what it did, mm, I'll go with more neutral. Now, if you take a look at the weekly time frame, weekly time frame needs a, well, it still has a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom. That formed back here on the week of June the 24th. It's the only one of the four index ETFs that have that uh, signal out there. You've also got a TD9 count bottom on the monthly chart. That would be negated with a close below 162.78. So uh, Hector and Patty, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Much appreciated. 
And uh, we get back from this break. Uh, Nicholas writes in. He says, good morning, Steve. Thank you for covering SMH today in your newsletter as well as in the show. Have a great day and a better one tomorrow. Well, I guess that's not a request. Thank you for taking the time to write that message, Nick. And you have a great Wednesday as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So a little bit of a rally uh, being attempted out here. If we take a look at the uh, speed dials, the uh, TAS market breadth, for the four different time frames that we track, the hourly, the four-hour, the daily, and the weekly, you'll see that those speed dials, upper right-hand corner, they're all set to red. Red tells us that there are more instruments trading below the bottom of their profile than the top. For example, on a 60-minute basis, 127 above the top, 254 below the bottom. That's for the S&P 500. The NASDAQ 100 out there, same situation for its 60-minute time frame, 22 above, 53 below. So you got to expect a very choppy market. Um, if there is a rally, it's not like it's a one-way move to the upside. It's going to be met with sellers for sure. David writes in from Tomball, Texas. He wanted me to review the yearly ExxonMobil potential A to B equals CD to the upside. So I'm using for my A point out here. happens to be the low from 1970. My chart only goes back to 1968 when it comes to ExxonMobil. So I'm using that at $1.57. The B point that I'm using out here is the high from uh, January of 2014. That's at the uh, 104.76. And the retracement, the B to C leg, was almost a 0.786, was 72%. 
and that low uh, took place in 2020. And that low out there was at 3011. The one to one, A to B equals CD gets us to the 103. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, one, yeah, the 103, a 19 area. I would think this will do more than a one to one and get up to the 131.26. Now, this is over time, and price needs to first close above 104.76 on a yearly basis in order to generate that A to B equals C D to the upside, which would be confirmed because the volume on that swing point, well, that was about $2.9 billion. We're already this year at $5.3 billion shares for Exxon Mobil. And finally, the question out here from David in Tomball, Texas, was to take a look at fuel cell, F-C-E-L, We'll switch over to that uh, screen here momentarily as we take a look at it. He's looking for a buy point. Well, we don't have one. Uh, you've got an A to B equal C D to the downside. That's what I see right now. You're in bar number five. I don't see any kind of a uh, bottom signal out here on a daily. I don't see a bottom signal on a weekly. And I don't see a bottom signal on a monthly time frame. So with regard to fuel cell technology, other than an intraday type trade out there, which what the 30-minute time frame chart is suggesting, that you could see it bounce up to 299 or maybe three dollars and twelve cents, David. I don't see a bottom pattern yet inside a fuel cell on the daily time frame. Folks, stay tuned. You've got great programming lined up. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. But please, first, have a wonderful Wednesday. Be safe out there. We'll see you again soon. Take care.